For any sort of paroxysmal spell, that means a spell that comes from out of the blue, they aren't all seizures. So for neurologists, we have to sort through different things in our heads as we're getting a description of the spell and doing an examination of other things that can look like seizures. So some seizure mimicking or things that, that, that can imitate seizures are things like syncope or passing out. I'll spend just a minute or two talking about this. <clears throat> One way to differentiate between syncope and a seizure is what happens right before the event. For example, with syncope, you might have a description of feeling flush, a cold sweat, feeling nauseated or dizzy, maybe having vision loss, often from the outside in, it's pathognomonic or very common uh, for having syncope. What happens during the spell itself? With syncope, there can be uh, unusual movements, uh, but often people are lying still and limp. And then the after effects. After having a seizure, there's very often a prolonged postictal state or having sleepiness and confusion, or syncope, you tend to have a shorter postictal um, uh, state, the, um, the way you feel after you have a syncopal episode. Migraines can be paroxysmal and cause symptoms mimicking a seizure, like unusual sensations or weakness in a certain part of the body. Cerebral ischemia, stroke-like symptoms, these usually have longer symptoms after the event is over. Different movement disorders, like tic disorders. This is an interesting one and that comes up frequently in the office as a family comes in with tics or twitches and, and, and they think, well, I wonder if these might be seizures. A good way to tell the difference between a movement disorder and seizures is that movement disorders almost universally go away when a child's asleep, where people with very recurrent uh, seizures will tend to have seizures when they're asleep also. Metabolic disorders, psychiatric disturbances like pseudo-seizures, non-epileptic seizures, and I gave some tips on how to differentiate between pseudo-seizures and non-epileptic, uh, pseudo-seizures, non-epileptic seizures, and true seizures, and breath-holding spells are all seizure uh, mimickers. A little bit about breath-breath-holding spells. If you remember talking about the cardinal manifestations or what a seizure is, is like, what it, what it looks like, is that seizures tend to be paroxysmal, that means there's no buildup to them, and they tend to be spontaneous from out of the blue. Breath-holding spells are always uh, provoked, or at least seemingly provoked, usually by some sort of uh, minor injury, a baby falling on his bottom. Breath-holding spells happen in kids somewhere between, say, 6 and 18 months, months old. Um, there's a, um, uh, usually some sort of trauma. Then uh, getting ready to cry, maybe taking a deep breath crying, or possibly even during vig vigorous crying, sudden stop, breath holding, so there's apnea, color changes, maybe even some unusual movements, and the postictal state. The best way to differentiate between breath holding spells and seizures um, is by what happens right be before the event. When I see a child in the office with breath holding spells, unless I get a very typical story, I may end up doing an EEG for those patients anyways. <laughs>